So here we are at uh, Pride 2022, the second one in the Isle of Man, and uh, we've got some great shots to play out here of the uh, 50 metre flag coming down the promenade earlier. Oliver, your first time to the Isle of Man, were you quite impressed with what you've seen so far? Yes, yeah, so um, it's amazing to have an event like this, um, Pride, in a community that d doesn't necessarily have their eyes open to so many different walks of life and different experiences, and it's just a great opportunity to pr promote that. Mm -hmm. um, I was born on the island um, in 1991, and that was coincidentally the time when homosexuality was legalised on the island. It's been a long time since I've returned, but it's actually great to see this the second year mm -hmm. and to be able to represent the Terence Higgins Trust. Um, and being in the military just shows the freedoms that people should have to be them true selves. You've you, you got so many things here going on. You know, was it tricky, first of all, being in the armed forces? and being gay or did you have to hide it or, or what? Um, I take a unique sort of approach. Um, why should you come out? None of my friends told me they were heterosexual, so why should I tell them I'm homosexual? Um, so almost I never came out. I actually told everyone I had HIV before I'd ever had a conversation with anyone about my sexuality because I'm no different to anyone else and I live my life how I choose to live it. So yes, is it difficult? It's not, no, because can you do your job is what matters, and that's the great thing of the military. Mm. They don't care who you are, what you are, what your background is. But they can did. You... They did, yes. I mean, that's, a, that's yes. a mind shift that's happened here, right? Yes, and, and I almost say that um, culture is more important than policy. Um, the military culture is there that they accept you, and there was even that period where policy existed, but people were still accepting. Mm. So it has had that massive shift. And I'd almost say, well, it, the Stonewall uh, lists have shown the military is high up there, just allowing people to be their true selves. Well, you're also here with the Terence Higgin Trust, and I know you don't mind talking about it because you're HIV positive. Yes. And that in itself, many years ago, would have been sort of a planning a limited lifespan. I mean, things have changed massively. So how much does the Terence Higgins Trust now have to do still? I mean, is it more educational or is it support or what? So the Terence Higgins Trust work is huge. There's so many aspects of it. So as you say, HIV today is very different to what it used to be. Um, almost polar opposites. It's not a death sentence. I take one tablet a day, which makes my viral load suppressed to an undetectable level which means undetectable is untransmittable. I can't pass it on. So I'm no risk to anyone, regardless of what, what goes on. So I'm okay medically, and my life is expectancy is arguably greater than that of an average person. Diabetes is seen as a more um, life-limiting condition today than HIV by the medical community but that's not understood. The stigma is still there, and you're twice as likely to commit suicide with HIV than you are without. Because that tombstone advert is in everyone's mind, and they still think that's today. I know people that have lived 20 years of their life and never told anyone that they have HIV in their bubble. Um, I know all sorts of situations where people have been um, attacked, run away from, marginalised because of that status. And I always say, I don't see stigma, I see an opportunity for education. Because that stigma is founded on a uh, an lack of understanding or no update of the fact that mm. HIV, so what? It doesn't matter. It's, it's in me, it's not me, and it, I can't pass it on. Mm. Um, and that went to the point that in the military, I sat there and I felt alone and isolated. I was diagnosed in 2019, and a year later, I had that mental health impact. I was signed off with depression, went to counselling with Terence Higgins Trust, and then eventually turned my eyes to the military and went, why am I alone? Because no one talks. So I spoke out, read the policies, challenged the policies, and then in the last few months, the rules have changed, and it's just through that education. So you can now join the UK military with HIV. Mm. You can now serve in the UK military unrestricted. And the big one uh, that happened on World AIDS Day was you can take PrEP without restriction. Mm. So PrEP um, is pre-exposure prophylaxis, which stops someone who is living without HIV from 
acquiring it through transmission. So if, if they came into contact with someone who had a high viral load, they couldn't, uh, they're unlikely to acquire it. So it's much like the contraceptive pill. Sure. It, it prevents something happening. And as it's already mentioned on the stage, in the UK, PrEP can be given to you uh, by your GP and all of that and national health, but on the other hand, they haven't got there yet. It's yes. interesting. So in the UK, um, PrEP, PrEP access um, is now standard um, to at-risk communities through um, gun clinics and GPs. There's so many settings at which you can mm. get PrEP, take it permanently or on an event-based event approach, so you can take it as short periods as required. But I was surprised when I, I sort of looked back to where I came and was born on the Isle of Man to find where policies are progressing and I've, I found in my own policy journey it was those hurdles were a lack of understanding, a lack of awareness, shine the spotlight on an issue and get people to understand it. Being gay, did that make you want to leave the Isle of Man then? Uh, at that stage? Um, oh, well, so I left at the age of five. Oh, right. So <laughs> you didn't even, didn't no. even, but... but would you still have been here then? That's right. Well, would it's I, hypothetical. Yeah. I mean, would well, it have been a more tough place to be brought up if you had uh, you, been... I'd almost say you don't know the, what the other life's like. Because actually, um, what's different between living in the Isle of Man to be in northern England, to being in the wrong part of London, to be in the south of England, where actually that community might not have a progressive outlook, be it if you're gay, straight, if you're um, a person of colour, what, if you're disabled. I'm technically disabled by law with HIV. So actually do people look at me as disabled? So many bits of discrimination, you just never know when or where it might happen. We just need to be inclusive, everyone counts. Finally, what does it mean to you being Manx, yeah, or a yeah. bit of a yeah. Time, yeah. But to have this sort of event going on here? Um, a surprise uh, is the best way to put it. Um, I'm, I'm over here with um, my other half. Yeah. 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 Over here with my other half, and I wondered, and I tried to explain to him what I sort of expected it to be. Um, and I sort of said, well, it's probably going to be like a village fate with rainbows. But wow, it's so much more than <laughs> that. It's only just beginning. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's what <laughs> and and he, was, he was surprised. He said he's, he's been to a lot of prize up and down the country, and he, and he just sort of said, the feel, the oh, feel yeah. is great. Just one thing comes to mind, people watching this on YouTube will come across this, people maybe in the uh, armed forces or whatever, what would you say to them about being who you are? Um, you're never alone, even when you think, and I've been there, in that, that darkest time when you just go, what's the point? There is someone else, somewhere, that is feeling the same, thinking the same. You just have to have that confidence to speak out, find them, and you'll find a community that is wider reaching than you ever imagined.